It's The Real News, and I'm Ben Norton. Um, on his trip to Nigeria, Macron also tweeted, he quote, wrote, quote, Steve Jobs' father was a Syrian refugee. It would seem that nationality has nothing to do with the ability to succeed. If you think that being a Nigerian means you can't succeed, then you won't. And what's interesting about this is uh, Macron brings this up and is an example of someone who can succeed despite their background um, in terms of colonialism. But Steve Jobs was actually the grandson of a millionaire and his father was not a refugee, but rather an immigrant who came to the US in order to do a PhD in political science at the University of Wisconsin. And then Steve Jobs was adopted by a white Christian family who raised him. Joining us to discuss this today is Baba Ai. Baba is, a, is the policy officer for the health and social service of the Public Services International, a global trade union federation. He is also editor of the socialist worker Nigeria and a contributing editor for the Review of African Political Economy. Thanks for joining us, Baba. Thank you for having me, Ben. Um, so I'm wondering if you could just briefly respond to this comment from Macron. He claims, he writes explicitly, quote, it would seem that nationality has nothing to do with the ability to succeed. And then he, as an example of someone, uh, he cites Steve, jo Steve Jobs, who is actually a counter example of the point that Macron is arguing. Uh, there are quite a number of things wrong with that uh, unfortunate tweet. Uh, one is uh, a slick uh, but not entirely um, successful attempt at patronage. I mean, Nigerians don't need a Macron to tell Nigerians that they could succeed. Niger young women and men hustle 247 to make ends meet despite the challenges, existential challenges they face, existential challenges that are largely framed by policies, imperialism, and in collusion with local bosses, the Nigerian state foisted on us. Before the structural adjustment program in the 80s, Nigeria definitely was not an Eldorado, but it was very far from those that are now dictating things in Nigeria, I mean, in the state, the political elites, and who are in cahoots with the likes of Macron and the elites in, in Europe, which made Fela to sing about ITT, international tiff tiff, that is collusion of the tiff outside and the tiff inside that makes the stealing of the resources that should otherwise have been utilized for the betterment of the lives of the poor working masses in Nigeria, possible. These people went to school free, free education. They had the best of health care. Under the period, the first two decades of Nigeria's independence, if you cast your mind back, a, a, a military head of state in the early 70s said, with Nigeria, the problem was not money, but how to spend it. You know, I mean, so, so, but the generation that he is now talking about that didn't face colonialism are facing something worse than what was the case in the immediate aftermath of independence. And, and, and that was largely due to a number of things. Like I said, the, the global um, social compromise, if you will, uh, between labor and, and, and capital, which was concession by the bosses uh, as a result of not just the war, you know, but also rising mass anger, which they tried to uh, deflect along the lines of reforms, you know. So uh, there's that element of patronage. And then there's an element of reducing what is a question of class divide between the 1% and the 99% to one of nationality. The fact of the matter is this, be it in Nigeria or Mauritius or Indonesia or Argentina, the children of the high and mighty, the children of the millionaires, the billionaires, they enjoy virtually everything the children of the rich in Europe also enjoy, not only in the countries where they are, but they can go to any country at any time at, you know, uh, the flick of an, without any problem. So you see, the 1% know how to take 
care of themselves. It's, it's not about nationality. Yes, it's true about that, but not from the angle it's coming from. It's true about that because the poor Syrian, those that is talking about, I mean, the Syrians that come as millionaires flying, you know, with the visa, maybe even the private jet, a former head of state in Nigeria held uh, a wedding for uh, his daughter last year. That's uh, General Babangida. You had 26 private jets. All of them were Nigerians that, that, that flew down there. I mean, so it's not as if poverty and the challenges of, of making ends meet, of self-actualization is one that touches every Nigerian. No. The richest Nigerian, who is also the richest African, by the way, Aliko Dangote, is richer than anybody in Britain. So, it's so, so would you now say that the child of a Dangote is, is facing such existential challenge as what children of about 70% of, 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 the, of the Nigerian population are living below the poverty line? And, and you are saying such, such things that it's just about nationality. Within every nation, as Malcolm X taught us, there are two nations, the nations of the rich, powerful, and the nation of the poor who are exploited. You know, you have the house Negro and the field Negro, those who collaborate with international capital, just as how in Europe you have, I mean, I was in Bristol for a conference a few days back. I saw more homeless people on the streets of Bristol than I saw, than I, than I would regularly see in, in similar quarters in Abuja. So Macron should not, I uh, think he can get away with reducing what is the fact that the few have been getting richer for ages, particularly since the introduction of the neoliberal framework for capitalist development in the mid 70s. And even after the global economic crisis commenced, contrary to what happens you know, in response to the Great Depression, where you know, mass anger organizing you know, led to the social compromise I, I earlier mentioned, the, the, well, the, the Keynesian welfare solution, so to speak. The likes of Macron have kept pushing it down the throat of the work, but, but we're not taking it. That's the remedy for the malady that they have put the whole of humanity into is more of the same medicine that has brought us to where we are. Cuts in the funding of public services, cuts in funding social services, cuts in wages, you know, uh, flexibilization of, of labor, and making life exceedingly difficult for the poor, making life exceedingly difficult for the 99%. So um, coming back to your, your question uh, more directly about that it's not about nationality, Nigerians would not, uh, I mean, you should just, you should just, you should just, I mean, it's not certain to me that I can be saying. He, he went to Fela's shrine. Did Fela come to, uh, to, 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 to France to learn to, to, to the Afrobeat is enjoying, he was dancing like, like there's no tomorrow. Is it not? In fact, I'm sorry to say this is absolute nonsense. We're going to take a brief pause in our conversation here. I'm Ben Norton at The Real News, joined by Baba Ai who is the policy officer for the health and social sector of Public Services International. We'll continue this discussion in the next part.